The review of this i7-4770 equivalent Xeon is a bit overdue, and to compensate, I decided to test this 4 cores 8 thread CPU using somewhat different settings compared to the 2022 video. Just like the previous videos, we will also be testing with the hyper-threading turned off to emulate the 4 cores 4 threads i5-4570, and also use Inspector to enable or disable the Meltdown and Spectre security patches. In the conclusion section, we'll examine how the selected multiplayer titles, including the Finals and CS2, are affected by enabling or disabling hyperthreading, or by enabling or disabling the two patches using the Inspector. The test system is the same Z230 workstation from HP, with 32GB of DDR3 running in dual channel at 1600MHz. The GPU used is the R9290X, and to run as much as possible into a CPU bottleneck, the games were tested at 720 resolution. We'll be testing all four possible configurations, with or without the Meltdown and Spectre security patches applied, on one hand, and with or without multi-threading enabled, on the other hand. We'll call these secure or unsecure, where the latter has the security patches disabled for maximum performance, and i5 and i7 to reflect the status of hyper-threading, disabled in the former and enabled in the latter. This would affect the number of threads the CPU has available at any time, 4 in the case of the non-hyper-threaded i5 and 8 in the case of the i7. To start things off, Apex Legends. What I like most about the graph scene now is how the i5 equivalent CPU seems to do just about as well as the hyper-threaded i7 equivalent. The game doesn't seem to need more than 4 core 4 threads, at least judging by the 1% loss above 100% and the average north of 180. As for the effects of running Inspector to disable the two vulnerability patches, the effect is non-existent for the i5 and at about 4% for the i7. However, in Counter-Strike 2, the Inspector utility provided an FPS boost that was higher than the error margin, of about 21 to 35 FPS extra, from an average of 164 at best. This came as a surprise for me, since my previous tests pointed out a platform bottleneck at about the 130 FPS mark. The 1% loss, however, between the low 70s and 100 FPS don't seem to favor either the i5 or the i7. Just like Apex Legends, Rainbow Six Siege seems to point out that the hyper-threading feature of the i7-4770 equivalent Xeon is not that relevant, and that a Haswell-based 4 cores 4 threads i5 would do just as good. In all cases, the 1% low stays around 140 FPS, while the average of FPS is just above 220. As for the inspector utility, there was virtually no difference between the runs with the two patches enabled or disabled. I could not use a predefined path in the finals, so the numbers you see on the screen right now show a larger variance. If anything, I'd say that hyper-threading should be turned on when available. 4 cores for threads available on the i5 might still cut it above 60 FPS on average, but the 1% lows, placed in the 20s, suffer compared to 4 cores 8 threads. The i7 managed around 40 FPS for the same metric. Fortnite runs pretty much the same on all four configurations, with averages in the 120-130 FPS, and 1% lows between 60 and 70 FPS. This is good news for the players out there still rocking their Haswell Core i5 CPUs. The game was tested on performance mode, which is a simpler DirectX 11 based renderer. The use of DirectX 11 probably explains why the game did not take advantage of the extra 4 threads that the i7 has to offer. To close it off, we have Valorant, a title that is notoriously CPU bound. This is visible also in the graph on the screen, and the i7 does benefit from 30 extra FPS in both the secure variant, that is with the security patches enabled, and in the unsecure variant with the patches disabled with Inspector. Still, all configurations have their average FPS range between 250 and almost 300, and the 1% lows stay well above 100 FPS. I expected that some games might benefit from turning hyper-threading off. This would make sure that the execution threads get allocated to a physical core instead of having two threads share the same core. But it turns out that there was no difference in average FPS between the hyper-threaded i7 and the plain quad-core i5, at least in the titles tested. If anything, it's the 1% lows that were a bit better when hyper-threading was turned on, even for games that may not use all available 8 threads. It may very well be that Windows services and background tasks took advantage of the extra threads, instead of interrupting the game execution. Since hyper-threading cannot be turned on and off from Windows, one would get to the BIOS to do that, it's probably better left turned on, 
and make use of it if the CPU supports it. As for the inspector tool, the benefit of using it to disable the security patches were at best in the few percent range. At least for Haswell on a motherboard with a microcode patch already applied in the BIOS, there is really no point in turning off the protection against Spectre and Meltdown using the mentioned utility. Older Sandy Bridge CPUs, however, might get larger performance gains from Inspector. Make sure to subscribe, we'll cover one in the future. As for this one, well, we're done. I hope you liked it and I'll see you.